This is State Representative Jeffrey Elmore. Welcome to this installment of the weekly session update where you will hear about bills, current issues facing North Carolina, and actions of the North Carolina House. Let's get started. Uh, the riots and protests that took place this week uh, adjusted our schedule a little bit in the House and Senate, but we were still hard at work uh, passing bills. Uh, we sent this week uh, SB 315, the North Carolina Farm Act, and it's now on the desk of the governors. Um, this will be very positive for District 94 because what it did, it included uh, entities that are uh, hunting, fishing, and equestrian activities to the list uh, that constitutes agritourism. And uh, this helps with uh, liability for these uh, folks that offer horse riding or maybe have a fishing pond, that sort of thing, and also helps them if a uh, county tries doing county zoning on them. Uh, the bill also included that a bona fide farm can provide on and off-site catering services um, to be able to obtain the permit. This is really going to help folks that have developed uh, wedding venues and um, meeting venues on the farms uh, where you go into uh, an old barn or maybe a new barn uh, to have your wedding, which is very popular right now. So I think the Farm Act is going to be very po uh, positive for the folks of uh, District 94 and statewide. Now, some bills that we sent over to the Senate from the House this week. Uh, in House Bill uh, 1071, we ensured that we are going to pay for uh, ADM growth in our K-12 schools next year with uh, the economic situation and the budgetary situation. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we secure those funds at this point and we make sure that we can pay for the kids that are coming to school next year. So that does that. And another exciting thing that I was a primary sponsor on, we moved through the House a bill that um, helps with our driver's ed. Uh, it allows the behind the wheel to go ahead and get started. It authorizes that. And it also helps the students that started their driver's ed class itself and didn't get finished. So if they had 15 hours of the class, uh, they are waived the remaining 15 hours so they can start the behind the wheel. Uh, it also included a uh, waiver of the road test for a student that had uh, is ready to get their provisional license at 16. Um, what this would do is allow them to go ahead and get their license and then they would go back and get uh, the road test once it starts back. Uh, it had a little bit of controversy going through the process, but we got it through to the Senate and the Senate is sending us a bill that deals with the road test component. And uh, our goal is next week that we combine both of the bills so we can go ahead and get that sent to the governor's desk so our young people can stay on track uh, with their driving program and get them on the roads because I know that's very important to people. Um, we also passed House Bill 1229 dealing with unemployment insurance programs integrity and uh, temporary able-bodied adults without dependents time waivers. Uh, this clarifies some language to make sure that uh, they can check for fraud on all of the unemployment claims. Uh, the unemployment claims have been very difficult. Uh, the administration has um, really drop the ball on being able to meet the needs. I still have constituents calling me where uh, Governor Cooper's unemployment office has not uh, processed their claim. They haven't heard anything for eight weeks, nine weeks. Um, it's really hard uh, in the situation that we're in because of the COVID-19 uh, that's going on. Uh, something dealing with COVID-19 that is a bill of interest that went through a sitting committee uh, at the end of the week, and I feel sure it'll move through the chamber next week, is that uh, it's House Bill 594, and it is a temporary opening of gyms, health clubs, and fitness centers. Basically what this says is, is we can get these health facilities going again, and uh, if they're at 50% 50 uh, 50 capacity and they spread their machines out, basically what we're doing with the restaurants, the governor has been hesitant to allow this, and this bill will make this happen. I know the gym owners out there, the folks that own the health uh, fitness facilities, if they don't open back up, many of them won't open back up. And uh, that's not good for our communities, especially as people are working to try to better their own health. And um, I, I think this is good, and you'll see movement on this next week. Now, speaking of the riots that I talked about at the beginning of um, the little broadcast here, uh, the speaker really had it on his heart. Uh, he witnessed all of that from uh, where he lives in downtown. 
and uh, it really struck him what was going on. And after a discussion, and he told us after prayer, it, he is developing what is called the Task Force on Justice, Law Enforcement, and Community Relations. Um, he said that he feels like that he understands what the protesters are talking about, but we cannot tolerate uh, rioting and destroying our cities and destroying folks' properties. And how do we actually have a conversation about this in a productive way where it, you basically do not have uh, two sides screaming at one another? Um, he is still in the development stages of this task force, which would uh, probably start after the end of session uh, with uh, representatives from law enforcement, representatives from the faith community, etc. And speaking of the riots, uh, it was very interesting, uh, Governor Cooper and his statements about uh, the protesters, etc. Even this week, he went out with the protesters, marched with them with a mask dangling from his face. He didn't have the mask on. He was uh, had it hanging from his ear, even though he's encouraging everyone to wear those and was definitely not socially distancing in the groups. Uh, he has exempted the protest from uh, any of the social distancing, etc., any of the executive orders. But at the same time, uh, he's been talking about uh, the RNC and how the RNC, the Republican National Convention, which is estimated to have a $188 million impact on the Charlotte region, how the RNC just would not work with him uh, to meet the regulations to hold the Republican National Convention. And now uh, we've heard that President Trump is recommending moving and the committee is even looking at other states. Uh, there hopefully will be some action next week from the House uh, passing a bill that would say, hey, the RNC is exempted just like the protests are exempted uh, from this so we can have the National Republican Convention here and have the economic impact of almost $188 million for the Charlotte region, which I think is critical in this time with uh, all of the impact that COVID-19 has had on our hospitality industry. Uh, it's very interesting. I, I think back to the HB2 argument, how uh, Governor McCrory was accused of losing millions of dollars because of his support of that policy. And uh, now we have Governor Cooper that uh, basically on a um, stance that he's having ag against the Republican National Convention, that he's going to cost our state almost $200 million of economic activity in a very serious economic downturn. I uh, appreciate you listening again this week. Finally, this is State Representative Jeffrey Elmore. I hope you enjoyed this installment. And remember, for more info, check out jeffreyelmore.com. And also, like my Facebook page, Jeffrey Elmore for NC House.